Hello everyone, welcome back to Building My Dream Zoo in Minecraft. Um, it's actually been a really long time since I've recorded and unfortunately um, I just haven't really had a lot of motivation to record. I've had a lot of ideas but just um, it just felt kind of daunting to like build and I've been a little bit worried that too many of my habitats look similar so I've been trying to like figure out what to build and how to make them unique. Um, but anyway, I just need a bit of a break anyway. So. But my classes are done now, and um, I'm really happy to be recording again. And so I've decided our next habitat here. So we're going to be building a habitat for Sumatran rhinos. And I'm really excited to do this habitat because I don't actually know too much about the Sum Sumatran rhinos. Um, but what I do know about them is pretty cool. Although unfortunately they are pretty endangered, but I'll talk more about them later as I build the habitat. Um, but one of the blocks that I wanted to build is something called Savannah Rock, which um, I don't have any of. It's from the Endangered Animals mod, so I may have to fly pretty far to find some of it. I'm going to wait till nighttime and sleep. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's why I've got my travel, um, just in case I see some cool animals out there, you never know. Um, and then if I need to collect anything else out there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be collecting a bit of stuff here first, and then I'm going to head out and see if I can collect some more materials. Okay, so I did find a rhino over here. I don't know. There's two different rhinos that are in um, the Zawa mod. Uh, one of them is Sumatran. Oh, jeez. I think this guy will attack me if I get too close. Uh, but the other one is a black rhino, and I only have one uh, black rhino in my storage at home. So I'm just curious what this one is. Okay, cool. Another black rhino. That'll be really good. Um, because, yeah, black rhinos are actually one of the ones that, um, are at the place where I work. So it's just kind of cool to see, you know, an animal that I'm familiar with. Okay, I also don't know if I found any peafowl before. And they're one of my favorite birds. I love them so much. Is there, oh, there's another one. Okay, hold on back um yeah so my wings are pretty bad uh still no savanna at all um but it does seem like i'm generating new chunks i only have 11 rockets as well um yeah i landed because i saw those and this is also a huge grassland biome which is pretty cool it's kind of hilly um but yeah i just wanted to give my game a little bit of time to load um, and so I figure I'll just walk through here a bit. Um, oh, we found one. Uh, okay, tapers. Are they all tapers over there? Okay, looks like it. Looks pretty safe. Lots of tapers. Lots of holes. All right. So, I don't actually know if we're going to find any of the savanna rock, um, and I don't know. I tried to find information online about it, but I couldn't. Hi! Oh! Okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, you're kind of pretty, though. Oh, he doesn't like that. I know I have a couple of these at home, but they're cool. Alright, well, I've explored through the whole savanna and a little bit around the other biomes near here. I dug down underground in a couple of places, and so unless it's like very small pockets that it spawns in, I don't think that the savanna rock is here, but I have no idea where it could be. So I guess in that case, I'm probably just going to head home unless I find something within the next minute. Okay, so I ended up in this jungle, um, and I found some parrots. I'll tame them back home, but I haven't found any vanilla parrots. I think there's, yeah, there's a couple more there on the, the mini-map. So I'm going to try to catch them. So that's super exciting. Um, I still cannot figure out where um, the savanna rock is. I don't know that it's, I don't... I even tried to look at the config files, and there's no config 
like folder or um, like file, not file, um, like document in my folder for um, this instance of Minecraft. So I'm very confused because the animals are spawning, they're in the game, it's, and it's like the trees that are in this forest, or uh, the jungle, are here as well. Um, so I know the mod is working, um, and like installed and stuff, and out this far I know that uh, the new stuff will spawn, but I don't know if it's a separate biome. There's not a lot of information about the mod online that I could find. What the heck is this? <gasps> Wait, is that a horseshoe crab? Hold on. Excuse me? Excuse me, game? Horseshoe crab! There's more! They're so cool! Almost out of nets. Oh, what are those? Are those like wolves or coyotes or something? Oh gosh, they're so cute! Oh, they're sleeping. Is this a good time to grab them? I don't want to leave my bed over here. Okay. Oh, they're. That looks evil. Okay, uh, we're gonna go over here and sleep. Let's see, that one is kind of on its own. Coyote. Oh, elephants are waking up. Oh god. Okay. Okay. There we go. We've got two coyotes. Alright, so the bad news is I think that these savannah rocks are just not implemented in survival. Um, I could be wrong, so if anybody knows anything about the Endangered Species mod, please let me know. Um, but I could not find them anywhere. I even did, um, I created two new worlds, one with Biomes of Plenty, one without, and went to Savannah's and a couple other biomes I thought it could be in, and didn't see anything even digging all the way down to Bedrock in a couple places, so. Um, if it's there, it's not easily found. So, I decided instead we're going to go with something a little bit different. So let me get our stuff out here. Um, and our habitat is going to be going in this area here that I've started to clear out. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, kind of like this whole area, possibly a little bit uh, where some of these trees are as well. Definitely want it to be big. Um, but yeah, instead of doing the savanna sand, which, um, or savanna rocks, which look kind of like this color, like a tannish light brown, um, I think we're going to try some concrete powder, the brown concrete powder here. And then the limestone is going to be, and so this is going to be like the backdrop, and then the limestone is going to be sort of the front in between the glass parts. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then, um, spoilers for one of our backs coming up, uh, these Sumatran rhinos um, are pretty good swimmers. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more detailed about that in a bit. Um, but they're pretty good swimmers, so I'm going to have some water and stuff, and I got a couple of saplings. So yeah, I just got to figure out kind of where everything is going to go. Uh, so I haven't quite started that whole process. I just sort of got a pallet and stuff going. Alright guys, so I just put together a little outline of where I want the habitat to be. And then I left this little kind of circle of space where I'm going to put some kind of something. Um, I have a couple ideas of maybe... Um, oh, what's the word for it? Basically like a little arch with like, like leaves on top or something, or like a little gazebo or something like that. Um, just something to fill in this area and make it like a sitting area or just like something like that. Um, and then this is going to be a viewing area and then I'm thinking of having like a waterfall come down and have like a pool of water. I'll change the shape later. And then I'm going to add a little bit of terraforming over here because this area is very flat. So we're going to make... I kind of extend this hill down a little bit here, I think. I'm going to have another viewing area down in this area. Um, but yeah, basically that is going to be the habitat, so we're going to jump into the time-lapse now. 
All right, so let's jump right into the facts about these awesome rhinos. And so let's just start with some general stuff. So the Sumatran rhinos are actually the smallest and the most hairy of all the rhino species. And in fact, they're only about three to five feet tall at their shoulders, and that's actually shorter than I am, so that's kind of surprising to me. Although they do still weigh on average about 1,300 to 2,000 pounds, so definitely could pack a punch. But they are pretty shy, and so they do tend to run away from people, and there aren't very many incidents of them hurting anybody. And their reddish-brown hair will typically cover their whole body, and it's a lot more noticeable on them than it is in other rhino species. And so they're actually the closest relative uh, to the extinct woolly rhino. However, the hair is most dense on them when they're calves, and so it can be a little bit more scarce when they're adults. Speaking of calves, though, the baby rhinos will weigh about 100 pounds when they're born, and then they will stay with their mother for up to three years. And then besides raising their calves, uh, r these rhinos are actually pretty solitary, like most of the other rhino species except for the white ones. And something I found really interesting is their mud wallowing behavior. When I'm at work, I actually get to see the white rhinos rolling in the mud all the time, and I know it helps them cool down and can also prevent sunburn. But apparently the Sumatran rhinos will do this also to help protect their skin against ectoparasites. And so I actually wonder if the white rhinos and even other species might do that for the same reason too. And the Sumatran rhinos are also very strong swimmers. And so they're known to follow the same path uh, through the forest, and so they'll cross the same river about 160 feet wide, despite how strong its current is. And while it's not known for sure, it seems that the heavier weight of the African species of rhinos tend to make them less able to swim than these guys and the other ones that live in Asia. And then one of the places that their trails lead to is salt licks. So apparently there are certain minerals that they need to get in their diet, but they don't get them from any of their food, and so they will travel regularly to these salt lakes, which I thought was pretty cool. And so like I said, they live in forests, but specifically, they live in rainforests and swamps, and they only live now on two Indonesian islands, Sumatra and Borneo. However, their range did used to be a lot bigger, and so it extended into parts of China, India, Thailand, and a lot of other neighboring countries. I actually found this uh, image that shows their old range. And logging was a huge part of this habitat loss, and then in turn the habitat loss has been a pretty big contribution to the decline of the species. Although it's probably not surprising that poaching has been the primary cause, mostly for their horns. And unfortunately, they are considered critically endangered, and there's estimated to be 80 or less wild individuals left. And even worse than that is that conservation efforts have proven to be pretty difficult. With that habitat loss, uh, the wild populations are increasingly spread out, and so that also makes it more difficult for them to find a mate. And then of course there's also the concern about the genetic diversity of the species, which so far it seems to be there is enough diversity left, but obviously that's going to be a huge concern moving forward. And on top of all that, there have been attempts to keep captive breeding populations, and there were actually three calves born in the Cincinnati Zoo. However, getting these calves born turned out to be a very huge struggle, and there was a lot of failed attempts before any of them were born. And it just seems like these rhinos in general don't tend to do very well in captivity. And so today, there's almost no Sumatran rhinos in zoos anymore, and there's actually none in the United States. And so the ones that were at the Cincinnati Zoo, they've actually been sent back to Indonesia, where they now live at the Sumatran Rhino Sanctuary. And so the Cincinnati Zoo actually still works with this sanctuary, and so they're trying to help them to breed more of these rhinos. And so while these rhinos are still in human care, um, they definitely lead more of a wild lifestyle. They do get veterinary care and things like that, but they are not like on display or anything where people see them all the time. And also in more recent years, there were two calves that were born in the sanctuary that actually the father is one of the rhinos that was born at the Cincinnati Zoo. And so it seems like there is a bit of hope for this species, but it definitely makes me so sad to think about it that people may not get to see them in the future. However, it does make me really happy to know that so many people are fighting so hard for these rhinos and that they're not going to go extinct without a huge fight for them. And I understand that this episode here might be a little bit sad now, and I'm really sorry about that, but I do think that awareness of these animals is extremely important because otherwise they could go extinct without anyone knowing. And in case you want to see more about them and the conservation efforts, I'm going to leave a couple links in the description of stuff that I looked at when I was researching. 
But let's try to get on to a more happier note, and we will add these rhinos to the zoo now. Alright guys, so this is what the habitat is looking like. I do really like um, how foresty it looks. Um, but then it is nice to have like a little bit more of a clear area and stuff, and hopefully the water will be okay. I do have to make sure that they can't swim out of that. Um, if so, I'll just have to make that top part a little bit taller, I think. Um, but hopefully that will be good for them. And so I'm just going to sleep in a second, and then we're going to try to put at least one of them in here. Since they are solitary, I don't know. I might do one, I might do two, and kind of make it a pair. Alright, and so this is kind of what it's looking like on the inside. It's definitely, um, is it very, like, dense, which I think is good since they do live in the, the forest, like I said. So, um, it's just kind of nice. Um, I feel like it would be a little bit of cover for them so they wouldn't be too exposed and too, like, you know, worried about people staring at them all the time. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can try to get at least one of them in here. I do have more pachyderm kibble, but I just grabbed a bit for right now. So, oh, this is a pretty one. Okay, it's a boy. Alright. Let's see. There we go. Alright, I want to see. I do have three of them. Uh, let's see what this one is. Ooh. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. Alright, so I think I will put a pair in here. Um, just because I think it'll be really cool to see them as a pair. Um, and to have like the two different variants. So, yeah, I think that will work out alright. Let's just see. Hopefully they'll wake up here soon. Oh, I need to also check. Um, okay, so they eat pretty much any types of weaves and the pears and then oh, we can do an enrichment ball tire swing all right um see i didn't get any of that yet oh are they fighting are they playing um okay i'm gonna watch them for a minute they didn't they didn't take damage um Can they jump on the trees? They're very jumpy guys, huh? There we go. Um, I definitely like your opinion if you have any thoughts about the transition between the wall and then the backdrop because I wasn't really sure what to do so it just kind of goes from one to the other. Um, so over here is really where it would look the ugliest. Um, the other two I don't think you can see very much. Um, but yeah, I'm just hoping it'll look okay. I think it, for the most part the brown background is really nice. Uh, because the rhinos stand out from them, but it looks a little bit better than dirt. Um, I need to fix like that spot right there and stuff, but... I can't tell if they like each other or if they decided we don't like each other. Oh! <gasps> oh god. Oh gosh. I need you to get down from there, please. Alright. 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 Um. This is why we watch them. think there's any other oh this one might be bad actually yeah that one's gonna be a problem there we go hopefully that's okay what are you guys doing over here do i need to separate you <laughs> i might need to separate them they get some air jeez I just need to make the walls a lot bigger, maybe. But yeah, I don't know. They might be fighting, but just don't hurt each other. Oh my gosh, they're literally so far in the air. Alright, I'm going to take uh, the female one out of here for now. 
And we're going to watch this guy and see <laughs> if he behaves a little bit better on his own. Um, so what I might do then instead um, is actually something that uh, the Buffalo Zoo has, um, which is a zoo that I grew up near. Um, so they actually have Indian rhinos, or at least they did the last time I was there. I'm pretty sure they still do. Um, but their habitat is kind of a big oval or like circle that's like split in half. Um, so they have like a male and a female Indian rhino on either side. And so I might put another one on the other side of that wall somewhere just to have two and then maybe build like some sort of door in between um, or maybe like a barn in the middle or something, especially because it has like this jut down here. So maybe I put a barn or something there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so maybe we'll have them separated and then like, but the two habitats will be connected so that we could breed them in the future, maybe. Oh yeah, look how cool that is. Oh, that'd be so cool to see him in here like this. Oh, so cute. Um, also, I really liked using these walls because I feel like it looks a lot sturdier than like wood to keep them in. Um, so that's part of the reason I went with this. I'm hoping over here it doesn't look too bad since it's kind of tall. Um, but yeah, the focus is obviously the rhino and the, like the atmosphere of the habitat. So hopefully that's okay. Um, if you do have any suggestions for names or improvements for the habitat, definitely let me know. Always happy for that. Um, and I will continue to try to make progress on like paths and everything else in the zoo. Um, but obviously it's way more fun just to build the habitats and see the animals. So I'm kind of struggling to find motivation for some of this stuff. Um, and like I said before, I was just having trouble just um, like having motivation to play Minecraft too much. I wanted to play, it's just, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I have so many ideas that I just can't sit down and focus on one. Uh, so that kind of is annoying. Um, actually, let's see what, real quick if we can see him from up here. Oh, a little bit. I do kind of like that though, where there are spots where you can't see him as well. Um, where it's like, like in a real zoo, animals will go places where you can't see them because they want some privacy and just like don't feel like being stared at at the moment. Um, so I really like that. Um, but then at the same time, there's lots of spots where you can see them really well. And yeah, so I'm just super happy with this habitat. Um, I actually maybe should get some coarse dirt. That's the only thing I didn't uh, grab and put in here. Um, but I kind of like it being green. I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think that is going to do it for today. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.